Okay, I'm back here working on the Honda Odyssey project. Um, yesterday kind of got cut short because uh, I was working on a deal on some other things um, that seemed like it was going to fall through and then ended up going through, so I had to take a drive to go pick up some stuff, um, which, eh, whatever, I'll show you. Um, I ended up, I ended up picking up this little miniature diesel engine. It's a six and a half horse single cylinder diesel engine, which is supposed to be a water pump. And while I was there, the kid I was buying that from also had this go-kart chassis. So this go-kart chassis um, is missing everything in the back, but I was like, Diesel engine powered go kart. So, I think that's a good idea. Um, I'm not 100% decided on it. I might end up throwing that diesel engine on a tractor because that's fairly common, but I think diesel powered go kart would be cool. What do you think? As always, if that actually takes place, you'll see it here on the channel, but I gotta be working back on this Odyssey before any of that. So, back to wiring my ignition system. Um, I have discovered a couple things. Uh, let me bring in closer, actually. I have you nice and close to the sparklers. Um, hopefully you'll be able to see the spark. Uh, if you didn't see the spark, too bad, it's happening. And I also discovered what the kill switch wire is. So if I hold the wire to a ground source, which is how a kill switch works, I now don't have spark. I was originally thinking that the kill switch was going to be this little random um, ring terminal that was on one of the screws that holds the coil pack in place. It looks like that was being used as a ground. But it turns out that wasn't the kill switch wire. This other wire down here that was cut out of the harness um, that goes down at the engine somewhere is actually what the kill switch is. So I, to test it, I just, you know, uh, twisted together some length of wire. Um, had the stripped end and held it up against the screw right here and voila, there's the kill switch or the Wire that's used the ground the coil out for a kill switch So I've got the ignition system hopefully all figured out aside from maybe having to flip the coil wires once I get To a point where I'm going to try and start it um, I got a couple other wiring things I need to do um, and I need to fill my cooling system up with uh, coolant and water. And um, I don't have any excuses not to try and start it at that point. So I have some of the wiring bits for my fan. I have some uh, toggle switches and then I have some inline fuses. So the toggle switches, um, I figure, I guess I'll have two. Uh, one to turn the ignition on, and then another toggle switch to turn the electric fan on. These inline fuses I'm going to use for the fan, um, and not present um, here are a set of relays, just simple standalone relays for the fan, and I'm also missing an actual kill switch momentary switch button. Or, uh, actually I bought one that was um, one that you would just flip. Kind of like a toggle switch but red and you just kind of you either have to flip it or you push it and it stays and kills the engine which is what you'd want. Um, but those I haven't gotten in the mail yet so what I'm going to do is the fan doesn't really require a relay, it doesn't draw that much power but I figure I'll try out a relay system and go with it. But I'm going to take and mount my toggle switches for the ignition and I could probably use one or, or use that as my kill switch temporarily. And then I'll hardwire in the fan for now and um, wire in the relay later. It's not that difficult. So as always with wiring, it's kind of boring and can be kind of tedious to film and to watch. So I'm going to do it and then just kind of tell you about it later. And then at that point, 
I won't have any excuses to not try and fire her up. Okay, I have completed the wiring. Um, I'm not going to say it's an amazing job. Well, let me just take that back for a second. The uh, way that it's routed is kind of, you know, questionable. Um, I'll show you what I mean in a second, but it's mostly because I'm not completely 100% done with what I need to do here. Um, it turns out that I didn't have relays ordered, um, so for now I'm going to leave it as sort of wired directly through the switch. Um, and I also need to add a kill switch to the harness as well. So right now I don't, I have an ignition off and on, but I don't have like a little button or a flip kill switch if something happens. But, I'll show you what I got going on. <clears throat> the electric fan is wired. Um, the inline fuse is right here. Um, the ground and the power follow the frame. I just kind of have it zip tied here. It's electrical taped together and then zip tied to the frame all the way down um, to over here. Then it meets the rest of the wiring here and gets put into a bundle and it runs all the way in the inside of that channel up to where I have my switches. Um, the kill switch or the ignition switch is this wire um, that meets here, runs all the way along here, and is this switch on the left. So that would be for it to run, that would be how you would turn it off or kill it. This switch makes the fan turn on. Fan off. This here just to give you a better idea of what I did with the mount the switches. Um, I cut out the fiberglass slash plasticky little cover and then went down to the frame and had to cut a hole and then weld on or weld in a block off plate to mount the switches. Um, nothing super fancy. My plan is to mount the kill switch up here. Um, I took a look to make sure I ordered the right type. I should be able to get it around here so that when you're driving it you just have to go and then it kills the ignition. I have the fan wired so that it moves air from here and pushes it out through the back of the uh, radiator. Um, <clears throat> I went back and forth a bunch of times on if I wanted it to suck air from here and pull it back through this way. Um, ultimately, I decided to make it push air from here out through the fan this way just because it matches the way the air is going to naturally kind of be flowing. And um, back here there's a chance that there might end up being a low pressure zone as the air moves across everything and out over the back, um, there's potential for there to be like a void that would create a lower pressure. And I figured I'll be able to move the air in here, which would be a higher pressure and it would help suck air up to the fan and push it out into that lower pressure zone. That's kind of, you know, far fetched, but you know, it sort of helped tip my uh, decision making process as opposed to having the potential for there to be a low pressure, lower pressure zone here and making the fan work against that, I figured I'll, well, make it work with it, <clears throat> assuming that that actually happens. So, what I'm going to do now is drop her off the blocks again and um, fill up the coolant with my 50-50 mix. Um, I also had tried to find a gas cap for this. I have no idea what tank this is from. Um, and the cap, I don't have a cap that Mix made or mated to it, so I kind of made one. I found some kind of cap from something else that um, kind of threads on there and is the right size, but it had a <clears throat> gaping hole, so then I found something else and glued this together so it's um, works. It's, the threads aren't exactly the right thread but it'll work. I just need to drill a hole on top to uh, alleviate the vacuum that'll develop in there over time. So, here we go. I apparently made it too stable.
That was kind of more embarrassing than I had planned.